Chapter 11, Part 3 of the Book of Camping and Woodcraft, a guidebook for those who travel in the wilderness. Recording by April Walters. The Book of Camping and Woodcraft, a guide for those who travel in the wilderness by Horace Kephart. Chapter 11, Camp Cookery, Part 3, Steaming in a Hole. To steam meat or vegetables, build a large fire and throw on it a number of smooth stones, not of the bombshell kind. Dig a hole in the ground near the fire. When the stones are red hot, fork them into the hole, level them, cover with green or wet leaves, grass or branches, place the meat or potatoes on this layer, cover with more leaves, and then cover with a good layer of earth. Now bore a small hole down to the food, pour in some water, and immediately stop up the hole, letting the food steam until tender. This is the Chinook method of cooking camas. Mammals. The following additional details are supplementary to what has gone before and presupposes a careful reading of the preceding pages. Deer's brains. Fry them or boil slowly half an hour. Heart. Remove valves and tough fibrous tissue. Then braise or cut into small pieces and use in soups or stews. Kidneys. Soak in cold water one hour. Cut into small pieces and drop each piece into cold water as cut. Wash well, then stew. Liver. Carefully remove gallbladder, if the animal has one. Deer have none. Parboil the liver and skim off the bitter scum that rises. Then fry with bacon. Or put the liver on a spit, skewer some of the call fat around it, and roast before the fire. Or cut the liver into slices one quarter inch thick. Soak it one hour in cold salt water. Rinse well in warm water. Wipe dry. Dip and slice in flour seasoned with salt and pepper, and fry. Marrow bones. Cover ends with small pieces of plain dough made with flour and water, over which tie a floured cloth. Place bones upright in kettle and cover with boiling water. Boil two hours. Remove cloth and paste, push out marrow, and serve with dry toast. Milt, or spleen. Skewer a piece of bacon to it and broil. Tongue. Soak for one hour. Rinse in fresh water, put it in a kettle of cold water, bring to a boil, skim, and continue boiling moderately for two hours. Venison sausages. Utilize the tougher parts of the deer or other game by mincing the raw meat with half as much salt pork, seasoned with pepper and sage. Make into little pats and fry like sausages. Very good. Squirrels. Parboil, then fry in pork grease, and make gravy as directed under frying. This dish soon palls. Then try stewing them along with any vegetables you have. For a large party, with plenty of squirrels, prepare a Virginia barbecue. Build a hardwood fire between two large logs lying about two feet apart. At each end of the fire, drive two forked stakes about 15 inches apart so that the four stakes will form a rectangle, like the legs of a table. The forks should all be about 18 inches above the ground. Choose young, tender squirrels. If old ones must be used, parboil them until tender, but not soft. Prepare spits by cutting stout switches of some wood that does not burn easily. Sassafras is best. Beware of poison sumac. Peel them, sharpen the points, and harden them by thrusting for a few moments under hot ashes. Impale each squirrel by thrusting a spit through flank, belly, and shoulder on one side and another spit similarly on the other side, spreading out the sides and, if necessary, cutting through the ribs so that the squirrel will lie open and flat. Lay two poles across the fire, from crotch to crotch of the posts, and across these lay your spitted squirrels. As soon as these are heated through, begin basting with a piece of pork on the end of a switch. Turn the squirrels as required. Cook slowly, tempering the heat if needful by scattering ashes thinly over the coals, but remove the ashes for the final browning. When the squirrels are done, butter them and gash a little so that juices may flow. As squirrels are usually hunted in regions where canned goods can easily be procured, I pen directions for a Brunswick stew. The ingredients needed, besides several squirrels, are 1 quart can tomatoes, 1 pint can butter beans or limas, 1 pint can green corn, 6 potatoes, parboiled and sliced, 1 half pound butter, 1 half pound salt pork, fat, 1 teaspoonful black pepper, one half teaspoonful cayenne, one tablespoonful salt, two tablespoonfuls white sugar, one onion, minced small. Soak the squirrels half an hour in cold salted water. 
add the salt to one gallon of water and boil five minutes then put in the onions beans corn pork cut in fine strips potatoes pepper and squirrels cover closely and stew very slowly two and a half hours stirring frequently to prevent burning add the tomatoes and sugar and stew an hour longer then add the butter cut into bits the size of a walnut and rolled in flour boil ten minutes then serve at once this is a famous huntsman's dish of the old dominion one can easily see how it can be adapted to other game than squirrels rabbit remove the head skin and draw soak in cold salted water for one hour rinse in fresh cold water and wipe dry for frying select only young rabbits or parboil first with salt and pepper cut off legs at body joint and cut the back into three pieces sprinkle with flour and fry brown on both sides remove rabbit to a dish kept hot over a few coals make a gravy as follows put into the pan a small onion previously parboiled and minced and add one cup boiling water stir in gradually one or two tablespoonfuls of browned flour stir well and let it boil one minute season with pepper salt and nutmeg pour it over the rabbit to roast in reflector cut as above lay a slice of pork on each piece and baste frequently the rabbit may be roasted whole before the fire to bake in an oven stuff with a dressing made of bread crumbs the heart and liver previously parboiled in a small amount of water some fat salt pork and a small onion all minced and mixed together seasoned with pepper salt and nutmeg and slightly moistened with water in which the heart and liver were parboiled sew up the opening closely rub butter or dripping over rabbit dredge with flour lay thin slices of fat pork on back and place in pan or dutch oven back uppermost pour into pan a pint or more of boiling water or stock if you have it and bake with very moderate heat one hour basting every few minutes if in pan but not if in dutch oven prepare a gravy with the pot juice as directed above rabbit is good stewed with onion nutmeg pepper and salt for seasoning rabbits are unfit to eat in late summer as their backs are then infested with warbles which are the larvae of the rabbit bot fly possum to call our possum an opossum outside of a scientific treatise is an affectation possum is his name wherever he is known and hunted this country over he is not good until you have freezing weather nor is he to be served without sweet potatoes except in desperate extremity this is how to serve possum hot stick him and hang him up to bleed until morning a tub is half filled with hot water not quite scalding into which drop the possum and hold him by the tail until the hair will strip take him out lay him on a plank and pull the hair out with your fingers draw clean and hang him up to freeze for two or three nights then place him on a five gallon kettle of cold water into which throw two pods of red pepper parboil for one hour in this pepper water which is then thrown out and the kettle is refilled with fresh water wherein he is boiled one hour while this is going on slice and steam some sweet potatoes take the possum out place him in a large dutch oven sprinkle him with black pepper salt and a pinch or two of sage a dash of lemon will do no harm pack sweet potatoes around him pour a pint of water into the oven put the lid on and see that it fits tightly bake slowly until brown and crisp serve hot without gravy bourbon whiskey is the only orthodox accompaniment unless you are a teetotaler in which case any plantation darky can show you how to make a ginger tea out of ginger molasses and water cornbread of course it is said that possum is not hard to digest even when eaten cold but the general verdict seems that little to none is ever left over to get cold when you have no oven roast the possum before a high bed of coals having suspended him by a wet string which is twisted and untwisted to give a rotary motion and constantly baste it with a sauce made from red pepper salt and vinegar possum may also be baked in clay with his hide on stuff with stale bread and sage plaster over him an inch of stiff clay and bake as previously directed he will be done in about an hour coon it is likewise pedantic to call this animal a raccoon coon he has always been is now and shall ever be to those who know him best skin and dress him remove the kernels scent glands under each front leg and on either side of spine in small of back wash in cold water parboil in one or two waters depending upon the animal's age stuff with dressing like a turkey if you have a tart apple quarter it and add it to the dressing roast to a delicate brown serve with fried sweet potatoes 
porcupine i quote from nesmuk and do not despise the fretful porcupine he is better than he looks if you happen on a healthy young specimen when you are needing meat give him a show before condemning him shoot him humanely in the head and dress him it is easily done there are no quills on the belly and the skin peels as freely as a rabbit's take him to camp parboil him for thirty minutes and roast or broil him to a rich brown over a bed of glowing coals he will need no pork to make him juicy and you will find him like spring lamb only better the porcupine may be also baked in clay without skinning him the quills and skin peel off with the hard clay covering muskrat you may be driven to this some day and will then learn that the muskrat properly prepared is not half bad the french canadians found that out long ago the following recipe is from Abercrombie and Fitch's catalog. Skin and clean carefully four muskrats, taking particular care not to rupture musk or gall sac. Take the hind legs and saddles, place in a pot with a little water and a little julienne, or fresh vegetables if you have them, some pepper and salt, and a few slices of pork or bacon. Simmer slowly over fire until half done. Remove to baker, place water from pot in the baking pan, and cook until done, basting frequently. This will be found a most toothsome dish. Muskrat may also be broiled over the hot coals, basting with a bit of pork held on a switch above the beastie. Woodchuck. I asked old Uncle Bob Flowers, one of my neighbors in the Smokies, Did you ever eat a woodchuck? Reckon I don't know what them is. Groundhog. Oh, la, dozens of them. The red ones ain't good, but the gray ones, man, they just make your mouth water. How do you cook them? Cut the leetle red kernels out from under their forelegs, then bile them fust, all the strong is left in the water, then pepper em and sage em and put em in a pan and bake em to a nice rich brown, and then I don't want nobody there but me. Beaver tail. This tidbit of the old time trappers will be tested by few of our generation, more's the pity. Impale tail on a sharp stick and broil over the coals for a few minutes. The rough scaly hide will blister and come off in sheets, leaving the tail clean, white, and solid. Then roast or boil until tender. It is of a gelatinous nature, tastes somewhat like pork, and is considered a very strengthening food. A young beaver, stuffed and baked in its hide, is good. Old ones have a peculiar flavor that is unpleasant to those not accustomed to such diet. Beaver tail may also be soused in vinegar after boiling or baked with beans. The liver of the animal, broiled on a stick and seasoned with butter, salt, and pepper, is the best part of the animal. Canned meat dried fish. These are good to fall back on, when game and fish fail, and you have tired of salt pork and bacon. Corned beef hash. Chop some canned corned beef fine with sliced onions. Mash up with freshly boiled potatoes, two parts potatoes to one of meat. Season highly with pepper, no salt, and dry mustard if liked. Put a little pork fat in a frying pan, melt, add hash, and cook until nearly dry in a brown crust is formed. Evaporated potatoes and onions can be used according to directions on packages stew with canned meat peel and slice some onions if the meat has much fat melt it if not melt a little pork fat add onions and fry until brown mix some flour into a smooth batter with cold water season with pepper and salt and pour into the camp kettle stir the whole well together cut meat into slices put into the kettle and heat through stewed codfish soak overnight in plenty of cold water put in pot of fresh cold water and heat gradually until soft. Do not boil the fish or it will get hard. Serve with boiled potatoes and with white sauce made as directed under fish. Codfish hash. Prepare salt codfish as above. When soft, mash with potatoes and onions, season with pepper, and fry like corned beef hash. Codfish balls. Shred the fish into small pieces. Peel some potatoes. Use one pint of fish to one quart of raw potatoes. Put them in a pot, cover with boiling water, cook till potatoes are soft, drain water off. Mash fish and potatoes together and beat light with a fork. Add a tablespoonful of butter and season with pepper. Shape into flattened balls and fry in very hot fat, deep enough to cover. Broiled salt fish. Freshen the flakes of fish by soaking for an hour in cold water. Broil over the coals and serve with potatoes. Smoked herrings. One, clean and remove the skin toast on a stick over the coals. 2. Scald in boiling water till the skin curls up, then remove head, tail, and skin. Clean well. Put into frying pan with a little butter and lard. Fry gently a few minutes, dripping in a little vinegar. Birds. 
any kind of bird may be fricasseed as follows. Cut it into convenient pieces. Parboil them in enough water to cover. When tender, remove from the pot and drain. Fry two or three slices of pork until brown. Sprinkle the pieces of bird with salt, pepper, and flour, and fry to a dark brown with the pork fat. Take up the bird and stir into the frying fat half a cup, more or less, of dry flour, stirring until it becomes a dark brown. Then pour over the liquor in which the bird was boiled, unless it was a fish eater, and bring the mixture to a boil. Put the bird in a hot dish and pour gravy over it. Wild turkey roasted. Pluck, draw, and singe. Wipe the bird inside and out. Stuff the crop cavity, then the body, with either of the dressings mentioned below, allowing room for the filling to swell. Tie a string around the neck and sew up the body. Truss wings to body with wooden skewers. Pin thin slices of fat pork to breast in the same way. Suspend the fowl before a high bed of hardwood coals, as previously described, and place a pan under it to catch the drippings. Tie a clean rag on the end of a stick to baste with. Turn and baste frequently. Roast until well done, two or three hours. Meantime, cleanse the gizzard, liver, and heart of the turkey thoroughly in cold water. Mince them, put them in a pot with enough cold water to cover, and stew gently until tender. Then, place where they will keep warm until wanted. When the turkey is done, add the giblets with the water in which they were stewed to the drippings in pan. Thicken with one or two tablespoonfuls of flour that has been stirred up in milk or water and browned in a pan. Season with pepper and salt, and serve with the turkey. Stuffing for turkey. 1. If chestnuts are procurable, roast a quart of them, remove shells, and mash. Add a teaspoonful of salt and some pepper. Mix well together and stuff the bird with them. 2. Chop some fat salt pork very fine. Soak stale bread or crackers in hot water, mash smooth, and mix with the chopped pork. Season with salt, pepper, sage, and chopped onion. No game bird save the wild turkey should be stuffed, unless you deliberately wish to disguise the natural flavor. Boiled turkey. Pluck, draw, singe, wash inside with warm water, and wipe dry. Cut off head and neck close to backbone, leaving enough skin to turn over the stuffing. Draw sinews from legs and cut off feet just below first joint of leg. Press legs into sides and skewer them firmly. Stuff breast as above. Put the bird in enough hot water to cover it. Remove scum as it rises. Boil gently one and a half to two hours. Serve with sauce. Waterfowl have two large oil glands in the tail with which they oil their feathers. The oil in these glands imparts a strong, disagreeable flavor to the bird soon after it is killed. Hence, the tail should always be removed before cooking. To cook a large bird in a hurry. Slice off several fillets from the breast. Impale them with slices of pork on a green switch. Broil over the coals. Baked duck. The bird should be dry picked and the head left on. Put a little pepper and salt inside the bird, but no other dressing. Lay duck on its back in the bake pan. Put no water in the pan. The oven must be hot, but not hot enough to burn. Test with the hand. Baste frequently while cooking. A canvas back requires about 30 minutes, other birds according to size. When done, the duck should be plump and the flesh red, not blue. This is the way to bring out the distinctive flavor of a canvas back. Seasoning and stuffing destroy all of that. Stewed duck. Clean well and divide into convenient pieces, say legs, wings, and four parts of body. Place in pot with enough cold water to cover. Add salt, pepper, a pinch of mixed herbs, and a dash of Worcester sauce. Cut up some onions and potatoes, carrots too if you can get them. Put a few of these in the pot so they may dissolve and add body to the dish. Flour or cornstarch may be substituted for thickening. Stew slowly, skim and stir frequently. In 45 minutes, add the rest of the carrots, and in 15 minutes more, add the rest of the onions and potatoes, also turnips if you have any. Stew until meat is done. A plainer camp dish is to stew for an hour in water that has been previously boiled for an hour with pieces of salt pork. Fish eating ducks. The rank taste of these can be neutralized, unless very strong, by baking with an onion inside. Use plenty of pepper, inside and out. Mud hens and bitterns. Remove the breast of a coot or rail, cut slits in it, and in these stick thin slices of fat salt pork. Broil over the embers. The broiled breast of a young bittern is good. Fish. Fish caught in muddy streams should be cut up and soaked in strong salted water. Never put live fish on a stringer and keep them in water till you start for home. 
does it not stand to reason that fish strung through the gills must breathe with difficulty and be tormented why sicken your fish before you eat them kill every fish as soon as it is caught and bleed it through the throat fish chowder clean the fish parboil it and reserve the water in which it was boiled place the dry pot on the fire when it is hot throw in a lump of butter and about six onions sliced finely when the odor of onions arises add the fish cover the pot closely for fish to absorb flavor add a very small quantity of potatoes and some of the reserved broth when cooked let each man season his own dish ask a blessing and eat roasted eel cut a stick about three feet long and an inch thick split it about a foot down from one end draw the eel but do not skin it coil it between the two forks of the stick and bind the top of the split end with green withes stick the other end in the ground before a good fire and turn as required stewed eel skin the eel remove backbone and cut the eel into pieces about two inches long cover these with water in the stew pan and add a teaspoonful of strong vinegar or a slice of lemon cover stew pan and boil moderately one half hour then remove pour off water drain add fresh water and vinegar as before and stew until tender now drain add cream enough for a stew season with pepper and salt no butter boil again for a few minutes and serve on hot dry toast fish roe parboil merely simmer fifteen minutes let them cool and drain then roll in flour and fry frog legs first after skinning soak them an hour in cold water to which vinegar has been added or put them for two minutes in scalding water that has vinegar in it drain wipe dry and cook as below to fry roll in flour seasoned with salt and pepper and fry not too rapidly preferably in butter or oil watercress is a good relish with this to grill prepare three tablespoonfuls melted butter one half teaspoonful salt and a pinch or two of pepper into which dip the frog legs then roll in fresh bread crumbs and broil for three minutes on each side turtles all turtles aquatic and most tortoises land are good to eat the common snapper being far better than he looks kill by cutting throat or readier by shooting the head off this does not kill the brute immediately of course but it suffices the common way of killing by dropping a turtle into boiling water i do not like let the animal bleed then drop into a pot of boiling water for a few seconds after scalding the outer scales of shell as well as the skin are easily removed turn turtle on its back cut down middle of under shell from end to end and then across throw away entrails head and claws salt and pepper it inside and out boil a short time in the shell remove when the meat has cooked free from the shell cut up the latter and boil slowly for three hours with some chopped onion if a stew is preferred use less water and add some salt pork cut into dice crayfish these are the crawfish of our streets tear off extreme end of tail bringing the entrail with it boil whole in salted water till the crayfish turns red peel and eat as a lobster dipping each crayfish at a time into a saucer of vinegar pepper and salt end of chapter eleven part three recording by april walters